In your chess games, have you ever felt like you don't really have a clear plan of what moves to make? Why does every move feels like a bad move? This makes it really tough to be able to think a couple moves ahead. Which means your opponent is going to sense your confusion and defeat you in an embarrassing fashion. But fear not, Top Chess is here to help you get good. This video is going to be life changing for you if you're below 1500 ELO, because you'll finally be able to know the right moves to make and why you're making those moves. Because we're going to explain exactly how to use each of your pieces to their full potential. 99% of players below 1500 ELO get this wrong and get wrecked. But if you can just get this right, you're going to have a better strategy in your games and get more wins grab some popcorn pay attention to the whole video because you will basically become hikaru carlson can we start with me no we start with pawns even though they are not considered pieces they are very important you don't even consider me a piece will i'll show you how strong this is a passed pawn this means that he passed next to opponent's pawns and now only things other guy can use to stop him are pieces these guys are very valuable as once they are close to becoming queens here black can sacrifice his bishop to create another passed pawn and as he is very close to promotion this will be very worthwhile wait do we have to do that yes oh come on hello as you can see, white can't stop both of these guys, so he will have to start giving up pieces and black will easily win the game. Pro tip, try to get protected past pawns. Protected past pawns. These are connected past pawns, two or more, going together to become queens. Imagine here instead of going c2, black went d4. Those are now three connected past pawns. White has no chance of stopping them. You are no bad for pawn army. How can I always achieve this? First of all, to have connected past pawns, that means you need to have your pawns connected in the first place. There is this thing called pawn islands. Basically, it's when pawns are by themselves. Let's take a look. In this imaginary position, white has two pawn islands and now what do you think? How many does black have? Black has three pawn islands. Now you might look at the f5 pawn and say, but this guy is all alone too. Yes, but he has the potential to be connected with the three guys behind him. My brothers will always protect me. Together we will help our king to win his first game, because black never ever wins on top chess. <laughs> so he can easily get connected with them. So a pawn island is when there is an empty file between the pawns. For white, this would be the E file, while for black, it's B and E and D files. So why is this bad for black? Let's imagine we add some pieces. White rooks will have an easier time picking up these isolated pawns, while black's rooks will have a harder time defending them. Okay, one more thing to know when attacking, is to follow the pawn chain. Let's say we get something like this. We have these two pawn chains, considering white's pawn chain goes from the queen side to the king side, white has more space there, he will be attacking on the king side, while black is the opposite, he has more space on the queen side so he will attack there. Easy. To summarize, past pawns are good, connected past pawns are even better, isolated pawns are weak, attack on the side where your pawns are facing. Thank you horsey. Now let's learn how you can be better. So the horsey has this special jumping ability which other pieces don't have, and he can be very unpredictable. They also have their own language that they can use to secretly talk to each other during games. Yeehaw yeehaw, yee yee yeehaw, ha ha yeehaw, yeehaw yeehaw. First let's look at some basic things. If we put the horsey in the middle of the board, he is attacking 8 squares. If we put him on the side, he is attacking 4 squares. And if we put him in the corner, he is attacking only 2 squares. So, ideally we want horsies to be as close to the center as possible. Now, because horsies don't have a long range like bishops and rooks in open positions we would like to trade our horsies for opponents bishops. But I thought we were learning how to use me, not how to kill me. Using you to kill bishops will often be your your best use so you're saying bishop is better than i am well usually yes but okay let's try to get the maximum from you as i said due to their low range they are less effective in open positions but this means they are much more effective in closed positions and considering they can jump over other pieces here they can be super strong finally i get some recognition 
Let's take a look at this position, let's say here black gave up his knights for our bishops, and the position is closed like this one, look at his bishops, they are sad, they are hitting these pawns and they can't do much, meanwhile, our horses can jump around and tickle black like crazy, the black bishop won't be able to defend all of the pawns, and white will slowly pick them up and win the game, this is an imaginary position which likely won't ever happen, but this concept will apply rarely, so only on occasion are you better. Then please take a look at this game where I'm very strong. Okay I see, here white gave up one rook to have two horses. This is good, because even though a single rook is better, two pieces are always stronger than one. And now what we have over here is called an outpost. An outpost is a square where a knight is defended by a pawn, and he cannot be kicked out by other pawns. As you can see, black has no pawns which can kick this knight out, so he will have to use his pieces. Considering he only has rooks, if he wants to get rid of this horsey, he will have to give up a rook. I told you I'm good. Okay horsey, you are good, but only if used effectively. To summarize, do not put me on the side of the board, do put me on outposts. I'm very good at closed positions as I can jump over enemy lines. Thanks horsey. Now it's time for the bishop. The bishops are the opposite of horses. They have long range and they like open diagonals and positions, so they can snipe. They are basically a chess version of campers. Now, I know we all like knights more as they are cool, but we must get real and realize how good bishops are. So we need to learn when do we want to give up our bishops for opponent's knights. Okay, so let's say the game goes like this. Ha ha ha, I'm going to eat you and give your king emotional damage. Here we are bringing the bishop out not because we want to take his knight, but because we want to pin him. Now if black defends it with the bishop or the queen, we just keep developing other pieces and we do not trade this guy. <laughs> boy. Let's look at another instance where we want to give up our bishop here. All of our pawns are in front of the bishop, blocking him from going anywhere. So it's likely that this bishop doesn't have a bright future. If we have a light squared bishop, we want our pawns to be on dark squares, so he can move in between them. I feel so claustrophobic in here I can't even move, I'm stuck in this position. Can you help me step bishop? Okay moving on. If our pawns are on light squares, the bishop's movement is restricted and so here we will be happy to trade our bishop for his strong knight. So where are the bishops good at? Nowhere, they're literally the worst piece, wait I mean. He let his intrusive thoughts win again. I like to fianchetto my bishops. It is when you put your bishops on g2 and b2, or g7 b7, and they are cutting this biggest diagonal. Now, they are far away so they are safe but they are constantly putting pressure and opponents have to be very careful as they might leave stuff. Nice. Look at our dark bishop, he is a monster, just aiming at that king. Now let's say black tries to play something like d4 to close off our bishop, now our other bishop comes alive and we can just take their bishop as they weren't careful enough. This is where the bishops are brilliant at, as they can so easily create a lot of threats. Ah, I feel so at peace today. Gotcha. What's up rook? Oh, fuck. What about trading bishops for bishops, do I do that? Okay so check this out, let's say we have this position. Our light bishop is our main defense here, if we didn't have him, we would be extremely weak on the light squares, so we need to keep him alive. Here, our best option would be to not trade them off and just close his diagonal with d5, keeping our bishop as our defense. If we trade, notice how now even if we close the diagonal, black's horse can now use these squares to check us and in this situation even fork us. Haha, <laughs> white you're stupid. Shut up I was just giving an example. Nah, I think you really are stupid. Fuck you. Let's look at an example. Here black sees that he can grab this rook, so he goes ahead and does it, but this just loses the game for him. Oh yay, the king is going to be so proud of me. I won material by taking the white rook, and I sacrificed myself so the king doesn't have to look at me anymore. Unfortunately, your king still won't like you because you just lost the game for him. Aw poop, I should have just stayed in the cozy castle it was warm there. After we recapture with the queen, we're threatening checkmate on g7, as black doesn't have any dark square protection. Black plays e5 closing the diagonal, but we can just do n passant, and we are going for it again. He takes with the knight, and now we can even sacrifice our knight with g5. If black takes, we again deliver checkmate, and if he defends the knight with let's say rook e8, we can just take the knight removing the defender of g7, and after black recaptures we again deliver checkmate. Yay, I am finally getting some love. Well it's just for this video so enjoy it while it lasts.
Use bishops on open diagonals. If you do not have a certain colored bishop, you will be weak on those squares, so you have to be careful. Same way if the opponent doesn't have a certain bishop, you want to use those squares to your advantage. Do not close off your bishops with your pawns. If you have a light squared bishop, put your pawns on dark squares, and vice versa. You can make a battery by putting a queen behind your bishop, adding extra pressure to certain squares. Okay, we're left with the rook. Aren't rooks similar to bishops? Exactly, so they are pretty similar. What? They like open files and open positions, so I will be really quick with these guys. So first of all, you want your rooks to be connected. This means that one rook is guarding the other rook. Then, we want to put rooks on open files, like they are right here, controlling E and D files. And as a final maneuver, we like to put the rooks on the 7th rank. This means lifting the rook all the way here. You lift bro. Yeah bro just building my physique. Black allowed us to get the rooks on the 7th rank, so now we're able to constantly put pressure and freeze his pieces into defending these pawns. This will win you many end games. Another little thing is doubling them up, which means putting one rook behind the other. This is done to create extra pressure along a certain file. Wow, so that is pretty simple? Yes, rooks are simple creatures. They're dangerous and just want to hang out with their boys. I would say rooks are the simplest piece to use, but one of the most important at the same time. Remember to put them on open files, and lift them up when you can, and you will be good to go. Okay, that would be all for this video. What about the woman? What about her? You didn't explain how to use the woman? Really? Yes, are you dumb? Oh geez, sorry my love. Okay I will try to be fast here as well. The woman is a combination of the rook and the bishop, which means that she also likes those open positions. As she is the most valuable piece, Ah, the king finally admitted that he likes me. Yes I do, because what's a king without his queen? W Riz. Ah, but there is something I should tell you. What? I used to be a pawn, I got promoted. Stroke. You want to be extra careful not to lose her, so do not develop her too early, because she can go anywhere in the board. Now, since each position is very different, I can't give you a tutorial on how to always use her, but remember that she can act as a stronger replacement for both the rook and the bishop. Let's say you lost a light squared bishop, and now you're weak on those squares. It would be wise to have your queen on light squares to cover these light squares, the same way if the opponent doesn't have a light bishop, using your queen on these light squares will be more effective. Another thing you're probably aware of is, putting her behind the bishop rook and creating a so-called battery as well as using her to threaten and deliver what we want, checkmates. With her movement abilities you can threaten a lot of things so allow her to multitask. In this position with equal material, white can play the crushing queen d2. Please don't see me. Threatening to win the knight, but also to come all the way to h6, and with the help of the pawn deliver checkmate on g7. So, he must play something like rook to e8, allowing the queen to come to f8 to defend checkmate, but now we can just pick up the knight and win the game up a piece. But king. Yes. What about yourself? What about me? You didn't talk about yourself. I don't like talking about myself, I want you guys to do all of the work while I sit back and relax. Okay, I will talk then. So to get the maximum from him, in the opening phase of the game, we must put him to safety by castling, and he should remain there until things on the board calm down and get really simple. This is where he wakes up and time comes that he leaves his little castle and joins the action. In the end games, where both sides have just pawns or pawns in a single piece, it's practically impossible for our king to get checkmated, so he must come close to the center of the board and help out with defense and defense. This is the only way to win end games, to use your king. In this position white's king remained in the castle, and so black is easily winning this end game because his king can pick up this pawn, and promote his pawn to a queen. I'm a queen now. If instead white also moved his king to the center, he would be able to block black from coming in, resulting in a draw. To sum it up, make your king safe in the opening and middle game, and use him in the end game. That was a lot of information. I know, and that is why you are free to come back to this video every once in a while. Also, you won't be able to use every single one of these concepts in every game, 
but you need to know them and whenever you see an opportunity to use them, the key to getting into the top 1% is mastering these simple concepts. If you want to know the best ways to increase your chess elo rating to 1800 plus, click the first link in the description right now to join Top Chess Army. We've had a member gain literally 200 elo in under 30 days, and we already had 5 people gain over 100 elo in less than 30 days, and if you join, you'll be next. Imagine how cool it would be to literally be a demigod at chess and win every game you play. Click the first link in the description to join Top Chess Army so you can beat your friends, win local tournaments, and not get mogged in your games. Join Top Chess Army now. Add Bishop where you come from. I spawned in because I heard there was an advertisement. It's my cue. Oh wow, anyway, see y'all later. No, no, no.